Did you know that your brain has the capacity to store more information than the entire internet? Welcome to the intriguing world of memory and learning. Our brains, the ultimate supercomputers, hold a labyrinth of memories and learning processes that shape our very essence from the mundane, like remembering where you left your glasses, to the profound, like recalling cherished childhood memories or mastering a new skill. Memory and learning are interwoven threads in the intricate tapestry of human cognition. They are the silent partners in our daily dance of life, influencing our decisions, shaping our behaviors, and coloring our perceptions. They are the invisible architects of our identities, crafting our sense of self from the raw materials of our experiences. Memory is the mind's magical library, a vast archive of past events, facts, skills, and experiences carefully cataloged and stored for future reference. Learning, on the other hand, is the process of acquiring new knowledge and skills, of sculpting and refining our mental models of the world around us. Together, memory and learning form a dynamic duo, a powerful cognitive engine that drives our adaptation, growth, and survival in an ever-changing world. They allow us to make sense of the past, navigate the present, and anticipate the future. But how does this magical maze of memory and learning actually work? How does the brain encode, store, and retrieve memories? How does it learn, adapt, and evolve? And what happens when these processes go awry? These are the questions that we will explore in this captivating journey through the neuroscience of memory and learning. We'll delve into the different types of memory, the processes involved in memory formation, the brain regions implicated in memory and learning, and the fascinating case studies and groundbreaking research that have revolutionized our understanding of these complex cognitive processes. So buckle up as we journey through the mind's magical maze of memory and learning. Stay curious, keep questioning, and remember, every day is a new opportunity to learn something new and make new memories. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting neuroscience adventures. Now imagine your brain as a vast library with different sections dedicated to different types of memories. Now just as a library is divided into sections, our memory too has its own distinct categories. Let's visit each of these sections one by one. Firstly, we have sensory memory. This is like the reception desk at the library. It's where we first process information from our senses. It's incredibly fast, but also fleeting. Think of it as catching a whiff of a familiar scent or the flash of a bird flying by. Next, we find ourselves in the section dedicated to short-term memory. This is the reading room of our library, where we keep information that we're actively using or thinking about. It's where you store a phone number you just heard or the name of a person you just met. But beware, it's a little like a whiteboard. If you don't keep writing, the information will fade away. Then we journey to the heart of our library, the long-term memory section. This is where all the books are stored. It's the permanent storage space for all our experiences, knowledge, and skills. It's like the grand old bookshelves that hold countless volumes of information, from your first bicycle ride to the taste of your grandmother's apple pie. Now, within this vast long-term memory library, there are two primary divisions, declarative and procedural memory. Declarative or explicit memory is like the biography section. It stores facts and events that we can consciously recall and describe. It's the story of our life, the chapters of our personal history. On the other hand, procedural or implicit memory is like the how-to guides. It's the memory of how to do things like riding a bike or playing the piano. Even if we can't explain how we do it, our body remembers the steps. Just like a library, our brain efficiently categorizes and stores memories for easy access when needed. Next time you forget where you left your keys, remember, you're just having trouble locating the right book in this vast, incredible library of your mind. Learning is like navigating a labyrinth, with each turn leading to new knowledge and skills. To understand this journey, we need to delve into the mechanisms underlying learning. These mechanisms are as diverse as the subjects we learn ranging from classical and operant conditioning to observational learning and skill acquisition. Let's start with the basics. Classical conditioning, a term you might remember from your high school psychology class, is the process by which we associate two stimuli. Think of Pavlov's dog salivating at the sound of a bell that once signaled mealtime. This is the brain forming a connection, a new path in our learning labyrinth. 
Operant conditioning, on the other hand, is about rewards and punishments. It's your brain learning that if you touch a hot stove, you're going to get burned. It's also your brain realizing that if you study hard, you'll ace that test. Every reward and punishment adds another twist to our labyrinth, guiding our future actions. Then there's observational learning, where we learn simply by watching others. This is how we pick up social norms, language, and even complex skills. Ever tried to learn a dance move from a video? That's your brain, building a new path in your learning labyrinth through observation and imitation. Finally, we have skill acquisition. This is the process of learning to drive a car or play a musical instrument, tasks that require repetition and practice. With each repetition, our brain strengthens the connections between the neurons involved, making the task easier over time. But how does this learning physically change our brain? When we learn something new, our brain forms new synapses or connections between neurons. This process, known as synaptic plasticity, is the foundation of learning. The more we practice, the stronger these connections become, a phenomenon known as long-term potentiation. It's like carving a path in our learning labyrinth. The more we walk down it, the clearer the path becomes. Every learning experience reshapes our brain, creating a unique labyrinth of knowledge and skills. So the next time you're learning something new, remember, you're not just gaining knowledge, you're also building your own personal labyrinth, one neuron at a time. In the world of neuroscience, some case studies stand out as unforgettable. Let's delve into a few of these intriguing stories and see what they can teach us about memory and learning. First, we have the case of Henry Mollison, better known as Patient HM. In a desperate attempt to treat his severe epilepsy, HM underwent a surgery that removed parts of his medial temporal lobes, including his hippocampus. The operation was successful in controlling his epilepsy, but it left HM with a peculiar condition, anterograde amnesia. He was unable to form new memories, yet his personality and skills remained intact. This case unveiled the crucial role of the hippocampus in memory formation and consolidation. It showed us that while our brains are incredibly resilient, they are also delicate and the loss of a small region can cause profound changes. Next, we have the story of patient SB. After suffering from a viral encephalitis infection, SB found himself unable to form new memories, a condition similar to that of HM. However, SB was still able to learn new motor skills despite not remembering the practice sessions. This case highlighted the distinction between declarative and procedural memory systems. It showed us that memory is not a singular unified process, but rather a complex network of different systems working in harmony. Finally, we have the case of individuals with hyperbrain activity, or HMBA. These people exhibit enhanced memory abilities, painting a picture of what our brains might be capable of under the right conditions. The HMBA study suggests that the patterns of neural activity play a significant role in memory formation and retrieval. It's like a symphony in our brains where each note represents a different neural activity and the melody represents our memories. These case studies provide unique insights into the complex world of memory and learning. They remind us that the human brain is a fascinating, intricate organ full of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. As we continue to explore its depths, who knows what other unforgettable stories we'll uncover. In the quest to understand memory and learning, some researchers have made groundbreaking discoveries. Eric Kandel's work is a prime example of such revolutionary research. In the 70s, Kandel embarked on a fascinating journey with an unlikely companion, a sea slug known as Aplesia. Why a sea slug, you might ask? Well, Aplesia has large, easily identifiable neurons, making it an ideal model to study the fundamental processes of memory. Kandel's research revealed that learning and memory are rooted in synaptic plasticity, the brain's ability to strengthen or weaken connections between neurons based on activity. He discovered an essential process called long-term potentiation, which is the strengthening of neuron connections through repeated stimulation. This work earned Kandel the prestigious Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in the year 2000. Scientific research continues to unravel the mysteries of memory and learning, revolutionizing our understanding of the brain. You might be wondering, why does all this matter? Well, the understanding of memory and learning isn't just an academic exercise. It has real-world implications that are far-reaching and impactful. For starters, it plays a fundamental role in education. By understanding how we learn and remember, teachers can develop more effective teaching strategies, and students can enhance their study techniques. 
It also has significant implications for rehabilitation. For instance, understanding memory can help in developing strategies to aid those suffering from memory-related disorders, such as Alzheimer's. Furthermore, it is critical for interventions for neurodevelopmental disorders like ADHD and autism. Grasping these brain processes can also inform our understanding of human cognition, consciousness, and even the nature of self. It underpins our decision-making, problem-solving, and ultimately our behavior. Remember, every memory we form, every skill we learn, shapes who we are. So, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to join us in our next adventure into the brain. Having delved deep into the fascinating world of memory and learning, we now prepare to embark on another captivating journey. In our next episode, we will explore emotions and the brain. Emotions, much like memories, play a crucial role in shaping our experiences and identities. They guide our decisions, influence our behavior, and color our world. But what is the neural basis of our emotional experiences and expressions? How do our brains process joy, sorrow, fear, and love? And how does this understanding inform our grasp of mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety? Join us as we navigate the intricate neural pathways of emotions, exploring the science behind why we feel the way we do. So stay tuned and remember to hit the notification bell to ensure you don't miss out on our emotional excursion into the brain. Until next time, keep learning.